If you're looking for a high quality, lightweight, fiber optic USB cable for the Quest 2, but don't want to pay the outrageous price for the official Oculus Link cable, then you're in luck with the new fiber C5 cable. Let's get right into it. Despite all the advancements in Oculus' new AirLink and virtual desktop, sometimes using a USB-C cable is the best way to experience VR without any fuss. For example, let's say you are on a congested Wi-Fi network, or maybe your gaming PC is not connected with an Ethernet cable to your router, or perhaps your router is just really far away from the PC. In those situations, you probably want to use a good, high-quality USB cable to have the best visual quality and least amount of lag while playing the Quest. The only real issue with the Oculus Link cable is that it is ridiculously expensive. And I made a whole video about this warning users that they shouldn't go out and spend all their hard earned cash on the official Oculus Link cable. There are actually some really good cheaper alternatives to the Oculus Link cable. Now, until recently, there hasn't been a third party manufacturer creating a fiber optic cable that's cheaper than the official Oculus Link cable, but also better than what typical third party manufacturers use, which was the copper wire to transmit signal over the USB-C cable. Thankfully, the company called Fiber has created this new type of cable that feels and performs exactly like the official Oculus Link cable. It's honestly just as flexible, lightweight, thin, and fast as the official Oculus Link cable, since of course it relies on fiber optics to rapidly send high bandwidth data over the wire. So when I compared the fiber cable with another third-party cable, uh, the Kiwi Quest 2 cable, I immediately noticed the difference in quality. The cheaper copper cable was totally fine to use. I had no issues, especially for the price. It, it was so cheap, but it was also noticeably stiffer and a bit thicker than the fiber optic cable. Also, as labeled on the box, the fiber cable is slightly shor shorter than the Kiwi cable at 15 feet versus 16 feet. But I actually prefer a slightly shorter cable in my situation since it just kind of reduces all the tangled mess. Notice how the fiber cable hangs loose and bends more than the copper cable, which is stiffer and more rigid. The only real con or downside I had with the fiber cable was that the USB-C port was a little bit too big to insert into my Samsung S20 phone with the case on. Funny enough, I find having a long and very fast, powerful USB-C cable to be very handy, not just for playing games on the Quest 2, but also if I really want to quickly transfer files from my phone or an external SSD drive. So this was a minor inconvenience. Also, one obvious difference you'll notice right away is that the fiber uses a USB connection at the end instead of a standard USB-A. Now this may be a pro or con depending on the available USB ports on the back of your motherboard. Generally speaking, USB-C is faster and that was proven in my case. In terms of the bandwidth, I measured the two cables and I did get consistently faster speeds with the fiber cable at 2.3 gigabits per second versus 2.2 gigabits per second. So let's talk about power delivery and charging your Quest 2 while you use it. One huge benefit with the fiber cable is that it has a much better potential power delivery. Let me explain that. So comparing the fiber cable with the Kiwi cable, I was able to charge my Quest 2 significantly faster using a standard USB power brick. However, please do note that even though that the fiber cable can transmit full power over, the long, over a long cable, your Quest 2 will only charge as fast as your motherboard's output can deliver. I noticed that the fiber cable was able to keep my Quest 2 charged for a bit longer compared to the Kiwi cable, but not by much since my motherboard's power output is very weak. In terms of latency, it was very hard to objectively prove that the fiber cable was more responsive than a copper cable. Even though that the fiber's bandwidth was a bit higher than the copper cable, we don't really care about sustained throughput for large file transfers. To get the best experience, we really care about the latency when sending and receiving many small packets of data over the wire. The fiber cable, in theory, should perform better, shaving off those milliseconds in latency and therefore giving you an edge in competitive games and fast pitched games like Beat Saber. To be honest, I did notice that my gameplay experience was very smooth and probably the best I've ever experienced when using the fiber cable. Not to mention that the cable is also a lot more lightweight, very bendy and thin, and it just makes the whole experience of using this fiber cable a joy to use day to day. So to answer the question, is it worth paying a little bit more of a higher premium to get a third party fiber optic cable over kind of like the standard cheaper copper cable? Well, if your primary way of playing PC VR on the Quest 2 is over the Oc Oculus Link connection, then I think it's definitely worth paying a slightly more expensive price to get a more premium cable. Not to mention, it's gonna have less lag, better throughput, have a lot better power delivery, on top of being lighter, thinner, and more flexible, 
you definitely get what you pay for. And the best of all, this cable is much cheaper than the official Oculus Link cable, so you're still saving a lot of money in the end. Anyways, that's it for this video. Please let me know what, how do you prefer to play Oculus Quest U? Do you prefer to use Oculus Link or are you using Air Link or maybe even Virtual Desktop? I'd love to know, so see you in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next video.